Well, I think you have to start with history and um, the buildings along Custom Street um, are really the only heritage set of buildings in the country as a heritage street and, and they're very, very beautiful and um, so preservation of those buildings really speaks for itself. People love to be around old buildings and, and uh, what we've grown to understand is that people like to um, congregate in intimate spaces and its lanes and its, and its discovery and, and you know it's a sense of adventure in a place where you can't quite understand how it all works and you figure it out for yourself. We're part of a uh, global community that our standards, our sites are not uh, what's happening across the other side of Queen Street uh, but you know what's happening in Manhattan, what's happening in Paris, what's happening in Houston, you know that kind of thinking and what's happening in Tokyo in particular. So that's a combination of things of very careful selection of, of the retailers, but also uh, an, an environment that seems uh, attractive, safe, interesting. Uh, the team looked, you know, they, they turned their kind of eyes back out into the city and looked at spaces that already worked here. We looked at um, areas like Vulcan Lane that were successful, and uh, that gave uh, rise to this Rokai Lane. I think the most intriguing thing about the alleyway between the beautiful old Nathan Building and uh, Agents and Merchants and Racket and the new uh, Westpac Charter Project is that uh, it's a new alleyway. If someone's got the, the, had the foresight to put a lane in where they could have pushed a building right up against the other building and I thought there's got to be something in this. Cartel, our, our business in Christchurch was in the lane and I knew the value of of what Auckland didn't have, which was really cool outdoor dining and drinking um, environments. I think the cobbles were tremendously important. The cobbles give you a kind of fineness. Um, and then it becomes about, again, a relationship with the people that are going to occupy it. So that, that team that shaped Agents and Mer Merchants and shaped Racket, how they opened into that square, how they occupied it, the kind of furniture they used, the big fireplace out there, those are the kind of the last finishing moves that, that make it a really seriously believable bit of, uh, bit of the city. The Northern Steamship Building had a common party wall with another building. When Commerce Street was put through in 1934, they just demolished the adjacent building and put it through, so there was a blank wall there. On this facade, uh, and on the northern facade onto Key Street, you'll find that it's a very composed and a very decorated building, but round the corner on the west face, uh, it's, a, it's a much uh, more ad hoc assembly, and so we were able then to take some liberties uh, with cutting larger holes in there, because the, the difficulty is always, when you're doing food and beverage, you need to be able to attract people in. Uh, but heritage buildings, uh, and particularly warehouses, uh, uh, inevitably very enclosed and their floor levels are lifted up because most of them had truck docks in them to unload um, uh, goods off the ships. That whole restoration, that was the commitment that Cooper and Company made was to restore them to uh, that level. And we've used the same philosophy both for Levy Building and then with Excelsior Stambeth. You've got the big doors, for instance, on Excelsior on the left-hand side. So it's a matter of standing back at the end of the day on the other side of the street and, and having a look at a building and saying, that's basically what it looked like when it started, other than the fact we've now got glass opening doors and so forth. But essentially what you've got there, where the doors are, is where the doors originally were. Um, the space is obviously a wonderful space. There is history here and Given my background, having grown up in Kenya and Europe and places like that, I have an affinity with history. So this for me is, is a space in Auckland that encapsulates our history. The shell was here. Um, there's an interesting mix of sort of plaster that you can see. Um, the colours have been brought out. So those are colours that have existed in the plaster in various places. They've just been brought out. And you've got this amazing stud height and sort of carry timber floors. So, all of that lent itself to the kind of environment that we wanted. Um, we wanted, a, I guess, a warm environment. We wanted history in that environment. Generator is born out of, um, I guess, a, a desire to unify, support, um, and inspire small business in New Zealand. Uh, there are existing concepts like this around the world. The idea being that um, we have a community of 
inspiring people, um, real people doing real business. They're in the small business sector. Um, we provide the support and the infrastructure to allow them to do what they need to do, um, take the hassle out of running their business. I looked around at a number of options, but the generator was the one that I chose because it was by far the best option for us at NZ Bio and for me in particular. Firstly, Britomart's an excellent location. I'm easily accessible by people that are coming over the bridge, um, coming by ferry, and people that are located in town. Um, obviously, there's lots of great places that I can meet people if I wanted to have something less formal than um, an office and a boardroom meeting. The deciding factor was, was very much also around um, the vibrancy and the atmosphere down here at the moment. And so it's, for me, um, it was a no-brainer. This building originally was a warehouse dated 1897. In 1934, it was completely uh, redone. And the detail to which we've restored the building is the 1934 design because that was the one that we had most evidence for. This stairwell, and particularly the wall behind me, is the first wall that we've done in the precinct where we did not fully repaint it, fill up all the blemishes, we just left it as it was. Because it tells a story, it tells the story of the different colours that were involved over the years, uh, the different graphics, and some tenants uh, really struggled with it. They asked the question, when are you going to finish the wall? And we just say, well it is finished. But this philosophy of allowing the building to tell its story has been carried through to others in the precinct. The Hanoi Cafe, for instance, and restaurant has the, um, the same idea where the um, walls have been left and cleaned off. As far as our exposed walls go, we get all sorts of comments. When will you finish them? Um, did you run out of money? But we like to think, we like to think that um, you know it's just taking a true respect of um, the building. For me, it feels like it has more soul, and, and it's unique in Auckland. We had a client say to us, "I love what you've done to the walls," and we said, "Look, you can rest assured it wasn't us. That happened a hundred years ago. We we can take no credit for any of that stuff." But you've got to make sure that you have the sympathy for the building that's around you. So resisting the temptation of trying to put too much in, let the building be the showcase and people just enjoy the facilities within it. Uh, and the roofs are incredible, the high studs, this particular room, it's very difficult to get people out of because it's beautiful. You could go to a new prefab building and have brand new stuff and have nowhere near the effect that they've managed to create here. Particularly when you explain the painstaking steps that Cooper & Co went to, brick by brick, floor by floor, wood panel by wood panel, bringing it back to its natural form, that's an incredible story. So we're in the Seafarers building in, in Britomart, a building that was built sometime in the 70s to look after, literally, the seafarers of Auckland. Uh, those that arrived on ships, those that were based out of Auckland, would all be housed here. The Seafarers Union used to be a nightclub and it's had a, a good history through the late 80s and early 90s down there in the music scene as well, I think. All the different cliques of Auckland would be down there from disco to rap to punk rock and everyone in between would go down there and, and gig out and use the, use the facilities down there for music. And it's a sort of oddball in Britomart amongst this kind of carapace of heritage buildings, this sort of late 70s, almost post-Soviet sort of building um, with a real kind of directness of concrete construction and a real kind of rigour to its proportions. Um, it's really unusual and we're right on the waterfront looking out over the harbour. Um, I don't think people quite kind of understood the potential um, and it's only now that we can kind of get in here, clear out the remnants of that accommodation and start to shape big, empty, powerful, raw space that that potential is sort of is truly understood and the excitement is sort of uh, is palpable, it really kind of energises people.